This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. I want to mention too, before we get going here, um, in September of 86, something else pretty big happens. Well, maybe not. Mm, I want your take. Okay. I have in my notes here that the Crockett's purchased the central states territory. Whoa. But when I talked to Mr. Crockett about that in our conversations with Conrad, uh, several months ago at this point, uh, before he tragically lost his life, I mean, talk about timing, Mm. uh, he said it was more like a, Hey, they were folding. So we just took it over type deal. Right. Do you remember the central states quote unquote acquisition? I remember we started going out and being in charge of their production. I remembered Wayne Daniel, who was our videotape guy. And basically because we didn't have an edit bay and we didn't know how to edit, we didn't have the equipment to edit. Wayne edited tape machine to tape machine, which was really old school stuff. They sent Wayne out to look over their production because Wayne said, I remember Wayne saying to me, he said, I don't know if you've seen their show, but it fucking sucks. It was like a one camera shoot, a one freaking camera shoot. They would station a camera and that was it. And they were, had a television show and they did pretty good business in the central States area. So Wayne went out and Emerson went out and we changed the way they shot their TV show at that time. That's what I remember about it. As far as talent, as far as using talent or swapping talent out again, I don't, I think what happened is they became a vehicle for Jim Crockett promotions in the central States. I don't think that. This may where this may have been where Bobby Jaggers came in, uh, and maybe some of the other guys came in that uh, Jim started to book. But I remember the production side of it because it was it was pretty shitty, and it was like I I, I don't know I guess it's an old school mentality, and it, the old school mentality was, you know, this <clears throat> we have an arena business. And they're going to watch TV show regardless of how it looks. Let's just put anything up there. Right. Right. And that's the reason their ass went out of business. That's right. Exactly. That, that they just, the, the old school promoters did not have, did not have a handle on TV production. Vince McMahon did. And that's why he prospered. And that's why that I'm telling you right now, if you take a look at the, the, history of pro wrestling. The reason that Vince is a multi-billion dollar company right now is production. Best looking TV show out there. And it started and he ran away from everybody else. Jim Crockett followed suit and did a pretty good job, but didn't do anything close to what uh, Vince McMahon was doing. So central States basically folded up. We took over their production, started producing their shows. And Wayne would go out there and Wayne uh, would go out there and shoot the shows. And I think, I don't even know if any of the old central state stuff is out there at all, but I think around this time, you're going to see a difference in their shows. I wanted to, um, wasn't bulldog Bob Brown, one of their big stars. You know, I have to admit, I don't know much about central states wrestling. I don't think I've seen very much, uh, footage from back then. Because Kansas City was their was their obviously their big place, but you would think St. Louis would be their big place, but no, St. Louis was completely different. It wasn't part of Central State. St. I, Louis was a thing of it. You you know more about this than I do. Well, I, I know that um, while Flair and everybody had a ton of respect for Sam Mushnick, right, right, that could and not I, always be said about Bob Geigel. Right, right, exactly. And supposedly. Now, remember now, Bob Geigel is a guy who was, uh, just based on his proximity to St. Louis mm-hmm. and considered a power player, even if as, as flair said, yeah, whatever that means, I was wrestling pork chop cash in a goddamn parking lot in the mud, you know, that type of shit, right. um, of a car dealership, you know, he right. set up a ring, right in the mud near a car dealership, come on down okay. and get you a new Chevy. And, oh, we got the world champion over here. Just walk over and meet him. 
I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Real carny shit. Right. Yes. Uh, so anyway, supposedly I believe the insinuation was Geigel didn't exactly sell to Jim Crockett, but Crockett had all the momentum here by 86. Mm-hmm. So if we position it, like it's sale, we like, it's a sale, then we can leave with some, some dignity, if you will. Yeah. And if you're Jim Crockett promotions, it looks like, man, you're big and you're going worldwide and now you run central States. So, and let's get them out of the way and get our stuff. And, and I think bulldog Bob Brown was one of their big stars, but I don't think any of their big stars ended up on our TV show. Again, we just kind of steamrolled them. I, did you ask about, uh, Don Owens uh, out in Seattle? We did. What was, what, what happened with that promotion? Same thing. Kind of the, uh, the video is available at adfreeshows.com where you can mm-hmm. see our entire two part interview with uh, Jim Crockett. And speaking of that, by the way, mm-hmm. back on track, we're going to be talking about all things, Jim Crockett promotions today. I want to go ahead and give everybody a, a bit of an update. September of 1986 was a little different. They used to do these shows in 86. Uh, they didn't start this way, but eventually in 86, they would tape them in the morning, air them that afternoon or that evening in 85, they were taping them like a week ahead. Well, as you recall, during the whole great American bash tour, the taping schedule was thrown off a little bit, but here it's happening again. So there was a very special Sunday edition of world championship wrestling that aired on the 14th. It was taped on the seventh mm. at WTBS studios. We know for sure. Tully and Arn tagged up there to take on Vernon Deaton and Tony Zane, but for whatever reason, that very special Sunday edition, well, it's not listed on the Peacock network. So that's what we would normally be trying to cover is, uh, is what aired on the 14th. Uh, it's, it's not there. Now on the 14th, you guys recorded the sun Saturday morning edition that would air on September 20th. So there's a lot of moving parts. And I assume Tony, since this is the superstation and the time of year that we're talking about here, that you guys were preempted by football. Do I have that right? Yeah. Preempted by football and maybe a Braves doublehead or something. I don't know. Right. But, but, but I, I think that maybe TBS was starting to do football at that time. The world makes your boy Ric Flair a long baby doll. Woo, and here we are. Once again, Tony Schiavone, the nature boy, the world's heavyweight champion, checking out his Rolex, making sure that Diamond Time and Baby Doll have got him out here when the time is right. Now we're talking about Dusty Rhodes, the world television champion, because. There was a chair in the ring because there was no referee and because he dumped my great cousin Arn Anderson on his head. That's why he's the world television champion, not because he went out and scored in a tremendous victory. Magnum TA. Magnum TA. The heartthrob. David Al told me that Magnum would rather play with his motorcycle than play with a real woman, right, Dal? That's right. All he is is a pile of blue jeans and leather. That's, that's right. It. That's Magnum TA. The ex, the ex US champion. You know, there's no love lost between myself and Nikita Koloff, but from New York to LA, they call Nikita Stead. You know why? Because he knows the difference between blue jeans, motorcycles, and championship belts. That's right, Magnum. Now, Dusty Rhodes, let's talk about you again, because I'm going to be in Des Moines, Iowa, and I'm going to be in Wichita. A couple of nothing have been times that the women are clearly starved for a real man, in, and I'm going to put you on the map. That's right. I'm going to walk the aisle. Kansas City, too. Cincinnati, Baltimore, the world champion, Woo! and baby now, <laughs> I'm going to be there, gear up, because the National Wrestling Alliance, Diamond, Rick Flair, the Four Horsemen, and baby now are for as long as we want to be there. <laughs> The world champion, ain't your boy Ric Flair, along with Baby Dog. That.
That, what you just heard, yep. is why you cannot script wrestling interviews. That was Ric Flair's talent. That was old school. I'm sorry, old school works sometimes, someplace. He had all the towns, man, didn't he? He had all the opponents. It just, that's why you can't have a writer do this shit. Unless maybe you're writing for The Rock. Uh, I was going to say, because The Rock, I mean, all of his stuff was scripted. Yes. So, you know, it's easy for us to say, oh, you can't script. But the thing yeah. is, it's good when it's good. Yes, exactly. It's good when it's good. You were talking about brother or daddy or yeah. Jack do you want to be a brother, Jack, daddy, or I mean, no, it, it's your daddy, brother. brother, Jack. Uh, I I use brother a lot now. I use two things when I'm talking to. I, I use say, hey, buddy, or like when I'm going to the airport or something, and somebody, you know, I I take my car and a, a guy's uh, taking me on the shuttle to the airport. I say thanks, brother. At the ticket counter, hey, brother, how you doing? So I use brother a lot. So there, I'm a brother. I'm a brother, man. Oh, we need to be careful with some of that phrasing. Okay. Okay. But I do, I do want to start working on that. All right. I was, uh, I was trying if, to figure out about brother Jack daddy. Okay. How about bro? I mean, that's a Taz thing, right? Bro. Can I tell Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.